Uh, Nathaniel here and welcome to a bit of data science in scikit-learn uh, where we learn just a little bit of data science and a whole lot of scikit-learn. Uh, today we're going to be talking about feature selection. So I'm not going to be introducing you to any more models. Instead we're going to be building on top of these models. Uh, one of the common things that you want to do with models is you'll have a model, we'll have data. The data will have lots of features. You know, the medium income of people in this area, the medium college degree that people get, blah, blah, blah. Um, and you want to figure out which features are most important and only include the features that are most important into your model. It's called feature selection. It's very important. Um, so let's just jump right in. Uh, so again, we saw last time this method called transform. Um, we're going to see it again. Uh, and I want to give you a little bit of intuition behind what it's doing. <clears throat> so I'll start off by talking about the variance threshold. This is kind of like the most simplistic way you can do uh, feature selection. We'll go ahead, we'll give an x value here, which is just some binary stuff. We'll make a variance threshold. And we'll fit our variance threshold just on the x data, and then we'll transform. Okay. So what does this mean? Um, well, we see we had three features to begin with. Each one of these little arrays has sort of three things, so it doesn't really matter what they are. And we end up with two. The idea is that the features that had a uh, variance below this threshold right here were dropped. Um, and all the ones that uh, were above were kept. Um, now the important thing here is that it only uses the training data to figure this out. So you'll look at your training data, you'll look at the highly variant ones in your training data, and you'll keep those. And even if in your test data those are you know, like basically constant functions, you'll still have to keep them. Uh, because remember the game is that you're given some training data. You have to learn on that and then after you're given the training data you take an algorithm and you hand it to your friend. And then your friend tries to break that algorithm with the test data. Yeah, well, your friend feeds the test data into this algorithm and, and has, to, has to act based on that. The algorithm can't update itself um, unless you're doing online learning. But that's for another time. Um, so uh, that's, why, um, that's why we have a fit method. The fit method doesn't need to take a y value because it learns in an unsupervised way. It just, it just looks at the x data, looks at the factors, sees which ones have the most variance. So this is kind of like our first example of, a, um, of an unsupervised learning technique. And we transform, you know, it could be called predict. Predict would be a fine name for it. Um, but transform here is, is to really mean that this is not a prediction. These are just the original x values. They just, just a transformation uh, of the original factors. Um, and in this case, just a reduction. Uh, there's this quick shorthand, which is called fit transform, that does them both at the same time. Um, okay, so uh, that's one way to do it. Um, there's a couple more ways that we can do it. We can do univariate feature selection, which we'll go into. We can do recursive feature elimination, and then we can do feature selection using select from model. So th these are the three feature selection techniques that I'm going to go through uh, and show you how they're used in um, scikit-learn. So with univariate feature selection, there's a couple things that we can do here. Um, you can select K best, you can select uh, percentile. You've got a couple of like select false positive rate, select false discovery rate, this, this type of stuff. This, this just super built in. And you've got something that's incredibly generic. Um, I'll, I'll give you some intuition on, um, on select K best and, and that should be able to prompt a discovery of what these other things do. Let's check it out. So select k best takes two parameters. It takes a k and a scoring function. And the scoring function is just, it's however, it's like how good is this feature? That's basically the idea behind the scoring function. Um, how good is this feature? Um, and uh, I mean, it's how good is this feature in the model is, is perhaps the best idea here. And the idea is that We'll just select two features uh, based on how well they do uh, on any sort of test. And we can choose a chi-squared test. Uh, you could choose a, a mutual information test. You could choose an F uh, classification. So just an F1 ratio or something like that. Um, we'll just do a chi-squared test. Go ahead and fit. And let me just show you. Uh, now, if you go ahead and transform your data based on the select K, uh, K best, you'll, you'll end up with two features. Again, because we were just selecting two. Now you can use select percentile just in the same way. And generic univariate select just allows you to do um, different types of selection techniques. You could take the worst and the best if you wanted to. Okay. Each of these features has a score, which are down here. 
The next thing, which I think is a little bit more interesting, um, the last one, or I'll save the best for last, is called recursive feature elimination. Okay, it's recursive feature elimination. Um, so let me just show you what this looks like. So it takes an estimator, it takes a step, and it takes a cross-validation method. And it also takes a scoring. Um, so what this uh, recursive feature elimination needs to have is it needs to have some sort of model that has a feature importance, whether that's in the coefficient or whether that is a feature importance given to you by a random forest. It needs that in order to operate. Um, what it will then do is it will recursively eliminate features until it reaches the best cross-validation score. Um, so we'll start off with all the features. It will recursively eliminate the worst. Uh, it will refit the model, rescore the model, see how well it does. And if it does better, we'll, we'll continue to reduce. If it does worse, then we'll stop. Um, then we can just sort of show you what this looks like. So um, uh, again, this, this is a little bit different in that this returns you a model. And so you, you can use uh, use this model to predict. So it's always always a little bit, um, but yeah, I mean you should, you should just be able to figure this out. So you can use this to predict. Um, it does pretty well. We can actually well, why don't we just go ahead and score this? See how well we do. Score x y. Pretty good, ninety nine percent, and using only two features. But again, we're also using random forests, uh, which are powerhouses. Okay. And then finally, we have feature selection using select from model. Um, so again, let's go ahead and read these docs here. Um, so uh, an estimator, um, uh, it can be both fitted and prefit, which is somewhat interesting. Uh, a threshold, uh, features uh, whose importance are greater than or equal to are kept while others are discarded. This is kind of the idea here. And prefit, whether, whether the model has been prefit. Um, so what you could do is you could go ahead and train a train a model uh, like this uh, lasso cross validation. So um, lasso is um, uh, linear regression with L1 uh, penalization. Um, so you could go ahead and, and pre-train that, and then out once you've trained it, you can go ahead and select uh, the features that are most important, or you don't have to. So we're just going to go ahead and select from model. I believe what what was the um, I don't know, let me check this here. The initial threshold, none, um, median, uh, looks like some, something like this. Um, so one times 10 to the negative five or something like that. So, so that's our initial threshold. So we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and select from model and we'll check out the shape. Um, so uh, our, um, our iris stereo set, it, it had a lot of stuff here. Um, so it had four features, it reduced it down to three. Um, down here, we'll, we'll go ahead and use Lasso CV, we'll select from model, we'll do the transform, blah, blah, blah. Let's check out what happens here. So again, we start off with 13, and then we drop down to 10 features uh, in, in the way that we've selected them. Um, okay, so I hope this has been useful. Um, feature selection is done very, very commonly. Um, these ways are, are generally the most accepted ways to do it. Um, the things that I, I use the most, um, I, I love univariate feature selection. It's super easy, super easy to wrap your head around. Recursive feature elimination is fine as long as your model doesn't take too long to train. And selecting from model is probably the one I use most often. Save the best for last. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.